Okay, in today's video, we're talking about Tailwind, specifically the best users of Tailwind in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Starting off with the most obvious choice, Murkrow. So Murkrow gives you Prankster Tailwind, which it's currently the only Prankster Tailwind in the game, though there is another speed priority Tailwind that we'll get to later. So you have access to this, but upon the Prankster, you also have the Dark Typing, which means you are immune to Prankster Taunt, so that you have a nearly guaranteed Tailwind outside of Fake Out. And this game also having access to Covert Cloak, you can literally set up Murkrow to have an unstoppable Tailwind outside of some really strong Ice Shards that would be faster than it. That's the only way to stop it. Now, even though Murkrow does not have a particularly good stat pool, it's pretty squishy. It does have access to some really good moves, because outside of Tailwind, you can also just run Haze on this to eliminate stat changes, which with Don Dozo being quite common in the meta, this is a easy mode counter for it. And this also pairs very well with Goldingo to reset the special attack drop after using Make It Rain. This also does have access to Prankster Taunt, so you can use this to try to cover potential trick rooms. And offense is most commonly foul play because this does not have very good offensive stats, although I have seen Brave Bird used as well. So this is a great option for Tailwind, and it's kind of the easy mode choice when you're not really sure what you need or you don't want to have to build around one that is more difficult to get set up. Murkrow is just the best option for that. Next on this list is High Dragon. Now High Dragon is a good choice because it has a lot of stats. Just a very good offensive stat and a decent amount of bulk. Also having access to that dark typing to prevent prankster taunt. So you still have a pretty safe tailwind. And thanks to the Terrastalize gimmick, running either Poison or Steel Terra on this gives you a nearly guaranteed Tailwind, even if it is going to be slower to set up than Murkrow. Now, if you want to also run Taunt, you can run Taunt on this too, which will be a non-Prankster Taunt. This could be quite useful against Farigaraf, which usually runs Iron Tail. That way you can get the Taunt off where Murkrow would not be able to. Though probably the best thing about High Dragon is its incredible amount of offense. You have access to a large variety of really strong coverage moves. And if you really need to just get rid of something very quickly, you also have access to Draco Meteor. So High Dragon, with the right Terra typings, can still give you a pretty easy Tailwind to set up. And this thing has so much offense that it's still a great choice for Tailwind, even though it is a little harder to get off than... Murkrow. Next up is Talonflame. Talonflame is the only other Pokemon in this game to have a priority Tailwind in the form of Gale Wings. But this also gives you access to any priority flying type move. So if you need a very fast Brave Bird, this can do it. Now, as far as the support set goes for Talonflame, it's not particularly strong. You do have access to Faint, which is not bad, as well as Quick Guard to stop other priority moves. Though probably the best other support move it gets access to is Will-O-Wisp to shut down physical offense. Though typically you want to run these two moves right here on Talonflame because you want to make use of its reasonably good offensive typing. And Brave Bird and Flare Blitz give you a massive amount of offense to just very quickly put into something. With Brave Bird being your priority option and Flare Blitz just being your fire type coverage. The only issue with that is your physical attack stat is only 81, so while it will be fairly strong being that Flare Blitz and Brave Bird do hit really hard, it's not going to be as strong as some other options, and you do give up your speed priority once you use those moves. Though this still has a very hefty 126 speed stat, even outside of its priority. So even without priority, it is still quite hard to outspeed. So depending on the team, this could be an ideal choice. I do think Murkrow's a little bit easier to play with, and High Dragon just has better offense in general. So I think this is one of the less good Tailwind setters, but it's still very viable, and you can definitely make it work in the right team. Second to last on this list is Pelipper. Now, Pelipper doesn't have priority Tailwind, and it is not particularly bulky either, although its physical bulk is fairly good, its special bulk is not. What this does have access to is Drizzle. So this is more of a multi-role Tailwind setter in that you also have weather control with it. But what also makes this good is it is the only Tailwind setter on this list that has access to Wide Guard, which there's a lot of really strong Pokemon that rely very heavily on spread moves in this game. Garchomp and Goldingo are the two I can think of on the top of my head, which if you've been playing 
the format any, you'll know those are pretty much everywhere. And Y Guard effectively shuts down most of the offense that those have. So being able to threaten both Tailwind and Wide Guard gives Pelipper some really nice utility. And you can also use its ability to set up a Swift Swim user so you have even more options to play with with Pelipper. So even though Pelipper may not be the easiest Tailwind to get off, it does have a lot of other utilities that just make it a very solid choice overall. Thing is, you can't just throw it in a team, you have to build your team with it in mind. Last but not least, we have Kilowattrel. Now, Kilowattrel is not particularly bulky. In fact, it is pretty squishy. It does have a very good speed stat and also a decent special attack if you want to set this up offensively. But I think what makes Kilowattrel so good is its ability set because you have access to three very good abilities that could all be very useful depending on the scenario or depending on how your team is built. Because Tailwind actually sets up wind power, so your next electric type move does more damage, giving this some very quick offense right out the gate. You can also use Vault Absorb to just be immune to electric type moves. And competitive is there if you predict your opponent is going to lower your stats. Which I know when I ran Kilowattrel, I ran it competitive because if it ever got intimidated, its offense became super good, and I literally swept a team on Kilowattrel alone. So it definitely has a lot of potential. Now, aside from running it offensive with Tailwind, it doesn't actually have that great of options. You do have like Eerie Impulse as well as Feather Dance, which are some pretty decent options, and you can set this up to lower both physical attack and special attack very effectively. But that's not always the most consistent option, and sometimes you just can't get it off, so you're probably better off just running it offensive, having both Thunderbolt and Air Slash, as well as Tailwind. The big problem with Kilowattrel is it is probably the easiest easiest one to outplay just because it does not have great bulk as well as not having priority. It also doesn't have the same utility as Pelipper, but in the right team composition, this is still very strong, and it's basically a shutdown to Arcanine if you're running it competitive. Probably the best reason to use Kilowattrel over the other ones is the threat of competitive, just to keep Intimidate users off of the field. So these are the stronger of the Tailwind setters. I'm sure if Whimsicott were in this game, it would definitely be on this list, probably replacing Kilowattrel, honestly. But I I think all of these are good options and will work in a wide variety of teams. Kilowattrel and Pelipper requiring the most effort to fit in a team, but all are definitely very solid choices. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all next time.